Never, never die Tell me about the last time you took drugs. The last time I took drugs, um, I probably took more than, than, than anybody could survive, you know? What are we um, talking about? How much? I don't know, man. I was banging seven gram rocks and finishing them because that's how I roll. I have one speed, I have one gear. Go! While the U.S. left was a constituent part of the larger constituency, it did not drive nor direct the forces that elected Obama. In many ways, it was hostage to those forces. Those forces were you, those between 18 and 28, who mobilized in ways can't never seen before. Cancer or panic, I can't do it. The Nike slogan doesn't say, just try it. Oh, okay, just try it. No, just do it, man. But you love to party. I mean, what's not to love? Those okay. forces what's were you, those between 18 I mean, what's and 28, who mobilized in ways never seen before. It was also African Americans who voted in unprecedented numbers for one they perceived as one of their own. Add to this millions of women, some of whom felt, frankly, disrespected by the choice of Taylor, who, though a woman, betrayed an astonishing lack of knowledge. But one cannot ignore the significant segment of those who felt betrayed or disaffected by the hard right tilt of the Republican Party, which ran almost exclusively on the notion that Obama was a socialist who in Palin's oft-repeated quote, pals around with terrorists. Madam Speaker, I have a few questions for my uh, colleagues. What if our foreign policy of the past century is deeply flawed and has not served our national security interests? What if we wake up one day and realize that the terrorist threat is a predictable consequence of our meddling in the affairs of others? and has nothing to do with us being free and prosperous. What if propping up regi repressive regimes in the Middle East endangers both the United States and Israel? What if occupying countries like Iraq and Afghanistan and bombing pa Pakistan is directly related to the hatred directed toward us? What if someday it dawns on us that losing over 5,000 American military personnel in the Middle East since 9-11 is not a fair trade-off for the loss of nearly 3,000 American citizens, no matter how many Iraqi, Pakistani, and Afghan people are killed or displaced. What if we finally decide that torture, even if called enhanced interrogation technique, is self-destructive and produces no useful information and that contracting it out to a third world nation is just as evil. What if it is finally realized that war and military spending is always destructive to the economy? What if all wartime spending is paid for through the deceitful and evil process of inflating and borrowing? What if we finally see that wartime conditions always undermine personal liberty? What if conservatives who preach small government wake up and realize that our interventionist foreign policy provides the greatest incentive to expand the government? What if conservatives understood once again that their only logical position, military intervention, and managing an empire throughout the world? What if the American people woke up and understood that the official reasons for going to war are almost always based on lies and promoted by war propaganda in order to serve special interests? What if we as a nation came to realize that the quest for empire eventually destroys all great nations? What if Obama has no intention of leaving Iran? What if a military draft is being planned for for the wars that will spread if our foreign policy is not changed? What if the American people learn the truth? That our foreign policy has nothing to do with national security. That it never changes from one administration to the next. What if war and preparation for war is a racket serving the special interests? What if President Obama is completely wrong about Afghanistan and turns out worse than Iraq and Vietnam put together? What if Christianity actually teaches peace and not preventive wars of aggression? What if diplomacy is found to be superior to bombs and bribes in protecting America? What happens 
If my concerns are completely unfounded, nothing. But what happens if my concerns are justified and ignored? I mean, what's not? Nothing good. And I yield back the balance of my time. I mean, what's not to love? But where we are need not determine where we can go. For people move by inches and often by leaps. This was undoubtedly a giant step in U.S. history. This was not a day ever envisioned by George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, or even John F. Kennedy. Yet one of black America's most revered historians, Vincent Harding, author of the classic There is a River, spoke for far more than himself when he said, So my hopes are very much focused on him, but not on him alone. I see the energy that's been built up over these two years of campaigns, and I see the possibility that we could gather ourselves together and begin to ask, in a very powerful way, not what should Barack Obama be doing next, but where do we go from here? 